Welcome to Revealing Jesus. Are you hungry to learn more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? I am your host, Christina Pereira, lover of Jesus, apostolic leader, licensed and ordained minister, author, podcaster, and kingdom party planner. Did you know that the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus? And that simply means the more we learn about our beautiful Savior, the more we will experience all He died to give us. Join me for all things the King and His Kingdom, including revelatory teaching, interviews with fivefold ministers, media leaders, authors, and more. Come discover the beauty of God displayed all across the body of Christ. Together, we are revealing more of Jesus to a hurting world today. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this very special episode of Revealing Jesus Live with my amazing guest, uh, Jamie Luce. She is, she's been on this podcast before, and I'm so grateful to have her back. We had just such an amazing conversation the last time, and she shares a heart for unity, and she's a lover of Jesus. She's my sister, and uh, she's also the host of the Jamie Luce podcast and a lover of all things of God. Please help me welcome Jamie. Hello. Thank you for having me today, Christina. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to have you back. I just, I loved our last conversation and I was like, I was doing a summer throwback series of which I accidentally fell into. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord knew I needed a break. Yes. <laughs> Somehow yes. I just fell into a summer throwback series. And I have to tell you, like, it was such a blessing because oh. it, it, it made me go back and it made me listen to all these amazing conversations. And it, it, it just, it, it brought up all of the feelings that I had in my heart towards all of these amazing people. And I was like, Oh gosh, Lord, this is great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. You know, he knows better what we need than we do. So sometimes oh, yeah. those falls are his little, little traps for good. <laughs> yes. I'm so thankful. Yeah. So thankful. And I know you are too. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to have you back. Um, so, you know, there's so much going on in the world right now. And, you know, we were talking before this uh, went live backstage and we were praying and we were just uh, declaring God's goodness and his mercy um, over this um, storm, this uh, Milton, this hurricane, yes. uh, getting ready to hit the western coast of Florida tonight and tomorrow. And so, you know, Jamie and I were talking and we were praying and we were just speaking words of life and, and mercy over the people of Florida. And I really feel like now the, the world is shaking, but God is calling the people of God to rise up in a greater level. And he's stretching us and asking us to grow and, and step out. He's, you know, the sons and the daughters of God are being revealed right now. Yes. And we were talking about that. Jamie, you know, over this last season, he's been telling me it's time to stretch. It's time to grow. What has been on your heart? You know, well, uh, we, I mentioned to you before we started that the Lord a couple of years ago laid that very scripture mm -hmm. on my heart that it's time to, you know, throw open those curtains and, and lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes and, and it, at first, it seems like this exciting word, and, and, and it is an exciting word, so I don't want to downplay that, that when the Lord tells you, I'm getting ready to do something bigger, and that you have to make room, we know that we have to make room for what he's doing, and that just making room is uncomfortable, it, it, and we were talking about, you know, how putting together a podcast and, and the mechanisms that you use to produce the podcast, and whenever you make a change, change is uncomfortable, change is hard. And we get into our little systems of ease and the Lord just kind of comes in and says, sorry, you're a little too comfortable, <laughs> you know, sending the disciples out into a boat, knowing a storm is going to hit, you know, I mean, it's, we, we just, it, it's, it's an exciting thing because it's going to produce bigger, better what God has in yeah. store for us. But the process is difficult. And um, my family used to take houseboating trips. And so if you've ever been on a houseboat, they range in size. You know, you can have a smaller boat around 50 feet or so, but our family's large and we always had a 75 footer. And in order to dock those boats, because 
we would go to a lake uh, in Nevada, Lake Mead, and the wind will come through so violently that if you, it will literally take your boat, even if you've got stakes in the ground, it'll pull them up and you'll be floating into rock if you're not careful. And it's very mm -hmm. dangerous. So you, they tell you, you have to find a cove that has walls on either side so that it blocks the wind. And the actual anchor process when you have to drive stakes is crucial to your safety so that you can sleep in peace at night and not be worried right. you're going to come loose and go floating, which we have had happen. So we've learned on the boats, the stakes are probably four feet long stakes. Mm -hmm. And you have to take the work of taking the ropes from the very back of that boat there's two on either side and take them past the shoreline and up into the hill. And you have to drive those stakes down and across manner until there's only about eight or so inches, 10 inches left on top to wrap, you know, continuously that long rope around to secure you. And that the work that that involves, I mean, if you, if you've ever pictured um, kind of how a, a person has to cut wood and there's, you know, and you've got this metal mallet hitting this metal peg. It's a sweaty, difficult job that takes a long time to do. And it, my, my poor family, somebody always ended up cutting something or hurting something. It, mm -hmm. it can cause injury. I mean, it, it's a hard process, exhausting. Um, us girls, there's no way you'd get me out there doing it. We'd be on the boat making sure everything was okay on the boat, but <laughs> we don't want to, it's hard work. So when the Lord calls us to bigger, he's stretching us. The, the stretch mm -hmm. means literally stretch. You're going to have to stretch. And that takes faith. That That's not an easy process. That takes faith. And, and so we want to be encouraging one another on this journey that whatever God's calling us to, there's a continual new dose of what's necessary to get that done in faith. You know, it might be the supplies. We're talking about the the um, the hurricane coming from Milton, and it's people are desperate to get supplies. Mm -hmm. people, yeah, I watched a video yesterday of uh, people trying to drive out of town, but the gas all mm -hmm. along the routes to get out of town was gone. So you're going to yeah. have people stranded in cars. I mean, the thought of mothers and babies yeah. in cars trying to get out of town to be safe, and and I, so there's just so much that. It could be overwhelming to deal with whatever life is throwing at us. You know, these are seasons we we go through. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it takes great faith. It takes great faith, and and we need to be upholding one another, really staying in prayer for those, even if we have no idea what that is like to go through that. To at least just ask for the Lord's protection and provision that we're, that we're truly holding them up and not forgetting them. Absolutely. You know, I, I woke up this morning and. Even before we started this this podcast, we always pray um, on revealing Jesus um, for the Holy Spirit's presence because yes. I I don't I don't I want this to be an interactive show right. where people encounter the Lord's presence. I don't need them to simply encounter me. I need them to encounter Jesus. Right. And so, you know, as we were praying, Jamie, I was seeing the hurricane in the spirit, and you know. I want to say this very clearly that that God doesn't God doesn't bring these things. God doesn't right. do these things. Right. Um, uh, these things came about as a result of the fall of man um, when sin entered the world and the devil began to reign. He's he's the one who kills, steals, and destroys. And right, Jesus makes it abundantly clear in the Bible that uh, he has come to give us life and life abundantly. So. I, I do not by any means believe that this is judgment from God right. or no. anything like that. No. The heart of God is breaking for people. And I want to say this very, very clearly that he is there with you and he will be with you and he will yes. um, shield you and protect you and, and, and love you. And, and it's, it's, it's such a hard thing that we still live in this world, you know, Jesus says, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Right. So uh, sometimes people think, oh, well, if God's in control, then everything's just going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that man handed over control to the devil mm -hmm. and, and, and God is through his body, through those who believe he's given us back now the authority and power 
And uh, we have that authority to speak yes. to these, these awful things that we're seeing. Yes. And right now, God in this hour is calling his body to come up higher. Yes. To come up into what he's called them to be because God doesn't want these things. Right. He's willing that no one should perish. Right. Not one. I mean, he died so that people could <laughs> not perish. I mean, he, right. I, honestly, I don't know what else he could have done. Right. I mean, he gave his very body. He gave his blood. He gave his, his heart. I mean, I don't know what else he could have done to make it abundantly clear that he wants people alive and well. Right. right. You know, and yeah. so as as we, the sons and daughters, are stretching and growing and stepping into the authority that God has created for us, we are going to see these things bow to the name of Jesus. Yes. And amen. that's where God's calling us. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking, too, how in, in that understanding that we live in a fallen world, that regardless of where the origin of this storm is, we, we can look at the disciples on the Sea of Galilee and going by command, God commanded them to get in the boat and go across to the other side. Yes. Knowing he asked them to do this when he wasn't in the boat the one time and then the next time he was in the boat, a couple of storms for them to deal with. Yeah. And when he was, what we have to remember is that he says, whether it was him walking on the water past them or whether he was in the boat with them, he brought peace the minute that he spoke it or entered the situation. He Amen. brings peace. And Amen. it can seem impossible to feel peace when the storm is raging around us. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we're in California, so we tend to get all the fires. <laughs> and right. we recently, a couple weeks ago, had um, a, a several fires going all at the same time. And I had a friend who lived in the hills where one of these fires was at. And I had sent a text message and said, are you guys okay? And where where are you in this? And she said, well, it's, it's very close by. And we packed up last night. They were getting ready to evacuate. And mm -hmm. And my heart, it, it it's almost like you you feel um, when you're watching. There, it, it's one thing to be in it, and it's another thing to be watching and feel helpless. Both feel helpless. <laughs> Both are wanting to do something to right. make this go away. But Jesus is always the only answer. <laughs> whether you're the one in it, whether you have a family member going through something difficult and you're having to sit back and watch whatever it is that's going on, that we are the intercessors. We pray. We call God into the situation. We say, Lord, we have you. We carry you. You are the light in the darkness. And so we're bringing this light to this darkness. We are asking for your intervention. We are asking like Jesus did, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And yeah. make a way, make a way of escape, make a way of provision, make yeah. a way of help and security, make yeah. salvation, whatever is needed. Uh, you know, if, if, if you know somebody who is dealing with this right now, um, like uh, my podcast is on the Charisma Network and Charisma is dealing with mm -hmm. this coming through yeah. and had to postpone and we're hoping that everything will be okay for them. Mm -hmm. There are pastors I know who are down in the area and mm -hmm. They're doing their best to help, but they have to brace for what's coming as well. And right. you know, everybody could feel like we're doing all that we can. And yeah. our only choice uh, sometimes, and it's the, it's the goodness of God because he allows us to know he is the answer. He's the only answer. And sometimes we will, it's not that we don't use our hands, right? If we know there's work to be done, like all the volunteers who are down helping right. with Hurricane Helene relief. And they're just down there all working so much and bringing supplies and people are volunteering their time, their money, their, you know, it's a sacrifice for everybody. And they're mm -hmm. all doing what they can to get down there and, and deal with it. And at the same time, we're saying, okay, Lord, we can only go this far with the flesh. There's only so mm -hmm. much we can do in the flesh. So right. we rely on the spirit of God right. to do what we can't do, to come mm -hmm. in and 
you know, make, make ways where there seems to be no way. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. So whatever we need, we have to say, I, I'm, I might be scared. I might be dealing with all kinds of emotions with this. I might be having to make decisions because I am literally dealing with physical stuff that needs my attention. I may have lost everything. <laughs> I, the thought that people have lost, uh, there was a one man, I heard this last night, one man who was a billionaire owned all the homes along the shore of this one particular neighborhood, massive wow. million, billion dollar area. And because he didn't use banks and didn't trust banks, <laughs> everything is gone. Everything oh. is gone. And yet I understand. I understand why he didn't trust banking systems and wanted to end for years. I mean, his whole life. He's an elder. He's an old man now. He's in his 70s now. And he had, he had and everything is gone. They said they saw him sitting homeless. And it's like, it, it's, it's unbelievable what's happening. Wow. So it can seem like, Lord, what do we do? We can feel the desperation of hearts. We can feel the desperation of answers. God, how? God, when? God, why? God, you know, but in all of that, we can take comfort that when Jesus would come into the boat, even when it makes no sense to the heart and the mind, he is there to bring peace. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, Christina, but for me, if I have peace, then I can make clear decisions going forward. It's when Absolutely. I'm chaotic in my mind and I feel the the confusion of it all. And we know that confusion is not from the Lord. So you can feel the bombardment on your mind and your emotions, mm -hmm. your physical body can feel it. And that we have to say, okay, God, I'm going to sit for just a minute. I'm, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to say, Father, I need you. I need your presence. Mm -hmm. I need your power. I need your leading, your guiding. I need you to order my steps. You know, I, I, I pray mm -hmm. that all the time. Take whatever's going on in my mind, whatever thoughts I have, whatever plans I have, I submit them to you, order my steps. I want you to have your way. I don't want to get in the way. Please remove every hindrance that is either coming from me or from the outside and you have your way. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming into unity with the Holy Spirit and yeah. then with the body of Christ to allow them to help where they can as well. Yeah, I absolutely love that. You know, it's amazing. It's it's. Uh, I was actually reading this morning that that we belong to God and we also belong to one another. Yes. And so I just absolutely love that. And there's so much power and the unity of belonging to God, of agreeing with God, saying, "Not my will, but Your will be done on earth yes. as it is in heaven." Yes. But also that unity of belonging to one another. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You know we're in this election season and it feels like there's so many storms, both literally yes. and spiritually yes, and politically and in all of these arenas. Yes. But it's so interesting because I have absolute peace, absolute peace. And that peace only comes from God. Right. He's the only one that can give that to you because when you have Jesus in your life, he comes with all of all that he is. Yes. Right? Yes. So he even says to his disciples, my shalom, I leave with you. My shalom, I now give and bequeath to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. And see, it's it's a peace not like the world gives. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a shalom wholeness that abides with us as yes. he abides with us. Yes. And so... And so if anything, right now, I just, Father, I just, I, I, I long and I desire that the shalom of Jesus would just be imparted to all those who are watching right now. Yes. Father, that, that, that the shalom of heaven, the total well-being for their minds, their souls, their bodies, their finances, their relationships, the atmospheres around them be imparted Jesus Father, I thank you for your wisdom and I thank you for your anointing. And I thank you that, God, you are shutting the mouth of every roaring lion. 
The word of God says the devil comes like a roaring lion. He's not mm -hmm. a roaring lion. Right. There's only one lion, the lion of Judah. Yes. And, uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, your words, Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, your shalom breaks the power of the enemy right now. Yes. God, I thank you. I thank you and I praise you, God, that your people, though we are surrounded by storms, we can walk in your shalom, God. Yes. So, Father, I'm asking you right now to just invade the spaces, Holy Spirit, Yes. of all those who will watch and who will watch later, right now, that your shalom would break the power of the enemy. In Jesus' name. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just also ask that as your peace comes, that you are imparting your strength, <laughs> that you are literally imparting your power and your understanding, your wisdom. You said in James that if any man lacks wisdom, he can ask of God who will give liberally to him. For those who have decisions to make, for those who are confused, Lord, we thank you that in your peace, you are bringing wisdom and you are bringing answers. You are showing and illuminating whatever path they need to take, that they will hear the voice behind them saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. So Father, we thank you that you guide, you lead, you protect, you enable Father, you strengthen. So we thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit that by your spirit and by your plan, by your hand, you are making all things good. That no weapon formed against those who are listening today will prosper. They can stand on your promise. Your word is true. It cannot fail. You are not a man that you should lie. So we thank you, God, for your promises are yes and amen to them who believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, I'm so thankful for that moment. Like I, I don't always know when it's coming, but I, like I said, I want this to be an interactive moment. You know, our God is an interactive God. Yes. Amen. He loves to be with us. He loves to impart to us. He loves to uh, speak to us. He loves to be with us. He's yes. just so good. Yes, so he's so precious. I know it, it's it's sometimes a um, a a polar opposite in our mind of uh, you like you said in your prayer. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he comes and the, I can just hear the the roar of his yeah. power and his yeah. intimidating purposes. You know, just to come in and and take over. And at the same time, he's so gentle, yeah, and so comforting and so yeah. unobtrusive and yeah. yet so close I, it, it's they Not seem exactly. like polar opposites but is like you said <laughs> the wholeness of shalom it is the wholeness yeah. of who he is everything mm -hmm. that we have need of he is the i am no matter what i need no matter what i need him to be no matter what is miss i am <laughs> i turn yeah. to the i am <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, yes, I am. I am. <laughs> That's a blank check. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and I know I love that about him so much, and I love, I love that dichotomy. He's uh, both simultaneously uh, velvet and steel. Yes. You know, meekness and majesty. Yes. He's both kindness and strength. Yes. He's both tenderness and all supreme authority. Yes. 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 Oh, isn't he beautiful? It is beautiful. It, it's going to take us eternity to just, I, I've heard it said, and I think it's a great example that if you've ever held a diamond and looked at a diamond yeah. with the light, yeah. just one slight turn and you see a new thing shine forth. Yeah. And it doesn't, I mean, you could just endlessly try to see all like a collide, you know, watching one of those little kaleidoscope yeah. things and it's all changing. And it's every little tiny aspect of him is like, wow, <laughs> you know, and, and you, it's, and you'll keep doing that. Like it just, it, it will be too much. There's just, just so much. And I don't even think because he is so much bigger than we are, no matter, no matter if in this life or 
in the spirit once we're gone from this earth. I don't know that we could ever still take in yeah. all of his majesty, all of his wonder. I just don't know that we, he's God. He will always be God. We will always not be God. So I just think, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's amazing. I love that scripture that says, um, it says it will take him an eternity to show us the riches of his glorious grace yeah. towards us who believe in Christ Jesus. Yes. Jamie, it's going to take eternity for us to see his goodness. Yeah. All of it. All of it. In yeah. its entirety. Right. It will take eternity. Isn't that and amazing? You no, know, and if we could, if we could really lay hold of that, yeah. Then we would realize why didn't I trust him more? Yeah. Through this or that. You know, I have mm -hmm. you ever gone through a situation okay. I know I have where when you came to the other side, you think, why didn't I just yeah. have more solid faith all the way through? Why did I doubt? Why did I waver a little bit? Why was I nervous about this? God always comes through on time. No matter what mm -hmm. the situation is, he he will be there on time. <laughs> it may not be yeah. the time I like, but he's never right. late. He will always be there on time. <laughs> right. And it's so interesting because as we go through these storms and situations in our life, we come into places of greater and greater faith. You know, Jesus, Jesus only said to the disciples one rebuke. Oh, you of little faith. Right. Why do you take so little? And it wasn't, it wasn't even a, re, a rebuke in a harsh way. Mm -hmm. It was because he wanted to give them so much more. Right. And to protect them from their own, you know, when we get so emotional with the fear and whatever the things are that are pushing on around us, he's wanting to spare us of that. He's saying, I don't want you to be anxious for anything. You know, right. I, I love the one example where he's, he's calling out their faith, but he uses the word where, where is your faith? And I, that hit me one day, like a ton of bricks, mm -hmm. because I realized the question was not saying that you don't have faith. Mm -hmm. He was saying, where is it? Which means mm -hmm. you have it. Where have you put it? Mm -hmm. Did you put it in the fact you that the sea was going to be calm today and the weather looks nice? Did you put it in the fact that you're a good fisherman and you know how to handle this boat? Did you put it in the fact that you're with good guys who are strong and, and these are comfortable for you? Did you put it in the fact that, I mean, it's like no matter where is your faith? Am mm -hmm. I putting it in flesh? Am I putting it in mm -hmm. the circumstance? And when then that doesn't go well? Now I'm mm -hmm. all up and, you know, and I've, I've, everything's in an upheaval. Everything is upended. And I am right. saying, okay, Lord, now I need you to come and I need you to fix this for me. And he's, well, where did you put your faith? If you'd have put it in me, mm -hmm. <laughs> it would have gone a whole lot differently. You would have felt yeah. a whole lot better. And so I always ask myself that question, where, yeah. where am I putting faith? Am I putting it in my ability? Am I putting it in education? Am I putting it in, you know, like, where am I putting faith? And, and he is saying, I am the answer. I yeah. am the strength. I am your help. You know, whatever yeah. that is, he is, praise God. <laughs> you know, and it's amazing because God will allow those places to be shaken. Yes. You know, where we put our faith in. When we put our faith in Christ, that's the only place that we cannot be shaken. Right. Because he right. is him and he is the only one who can truly deliver, save, right. heal, protect, prosper, provide. But if we put our faith in other things, just like you said, those things can be shaken because they're man-made. Right. Just like just like we're looking at this election. Yes. I've seen so many people across the body of Christ that have put their faith in candidates. Right. And don't get me wrong, we should vote. Right. We should, we are still citizens of the United States, but our primary citizenship is in the kingdom of God. Right. And it is to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, period. Right. You know, and so our faith and our trust should be in Christ. Right. In Christ alone. And so if we are longing for change, our focus in our eyes, our direction, 
our proclamation, our reliance should be on Christ right. and the spirit of the living God. He says, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Yes. And, and that is where we need to be as the people of God in the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that we don't do practical things, but we do practical right. things in light of the spirit led activity of God. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. It reminds me of the scripture that says that it is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And we get worried and, and rightly so because we physically live here. I understand, I understand the dynamic of how we have to think and make adjustments and make plans according to the actual physical life we live. But regardless of what happens in the election, we have to remember that, and it pains me to say that, <laughs> but whatever happens, yeah. if, if no matter what plans we think will accomplish what we think they will accomplish, mm -hmm. it's just as you said, we are citizens of his kingdom. Yes. And in that kingdom, I have everything that I need. I have all the provision. I have all the safety and security. I have yes. all of the um, the means to accomplish whatever it is that he's called me to do. So he doesn't call me to something and then say, now go do it outside of the kingdom and figure out a way to make it happen. Whatever God is calling us to, whatever things he's asking of us, whatever things that we are dealing with, if I recognize that I am a citizen of his kingdom, like you said, that comes first then I can say, Lord, this may not be available to me in this natural kingdom. These things may be encroaching on me in this natural kingdom. These things may bring hindrances and bondages in the natural realm, but I am mm -hmm. free in your kingdom and you will make a way because you are the king of this kingdom. And if you want this done, you'll see to it that it gets done and you'll provide yeah. for me what I need. So we ha it's yeah. that that balance of how do I live this natural life, remembering I live an even more alive, true, real, everlasting life in his kingdom. And that yeah. that kingdom can truly affect this kingdom that I'm right. living in. This one right. overrules, this one yeah. supersedes <laughs> this <Yeah>. natural kingdom. <laughs> Amen. That's right. You know, and I think if uh, there's so many people out there, so many believers out there, who've not yet come to a maturity of faith where they realize that they're already seated in heavenly places in Christ right. Jesus. And we technically, technically we live from heaven to earth, right? We are more alive in Christ seated on the throne than we are alive here, Jamie, which right. is just mind boggling to think. About. Right. <laughs> and so as we live from that heavenly reality towards earth and not vice versa, Mm -hmm. of us down here on earth pleading to heaven to intercede, right? Right. As we live from heaven to earth, we can then affect earth the way that heaven sees it. So how can we understand what God is speaking unless we are seated in heavenly places in Christ, right. unless the mind of Christ is revealing it to us, unless right. we are hearing it spoken in heaven, what the desire in the heart of God is, towards the earth. Right. And from there, then we declare, then we partner with heaven, what God is saying, what God is wanting to do in the earth. And from there, we see the atmosphere of heaven invade the places of the earth. Yes. And it's a completely different shift. Yes. Completely different. And so once we arise as the people of God, as the sons and daughters of God, once we grow, once we strengthen, once we lengthen, once we come into this place yes. that God is calling us to, yes, we can then speak what God is speaking into the earth, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah. it makes me think of just a reminder for people that we are to take what we see in his word and say, this is not only what God has declared, I'm coming into agreement with what this word has declared over whatever these situations are, that if he did it before, he'll do it again, yes. that he is the Lord God who does not change, that I don't have to worry 
that, yeah, you did it then, but because you're kind of fickle, you may not do it for me. <laughs> it's like, he is constant. He is so constant. He is so faithful that yes. we can't yes. judge him according yes. to the ways of man because he is so superior. He is so yes. not man that yes. it's the reason Jesus had to die in bodily form to take this way that man does and bury it and yeah. then bring us back to his true life to be able to say, okay, I want you to see yourself in, in its true reality. It's mm -hmm. just what you were saying that we tend to look at this earthly realm as what's more real. It's not more real. Th this is the created versus being the creator's realm. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. I, always, I tend to think of our lives, um, it helps me to remember this, that no matter what season that I might be in, no matter what circumstances I might be going through, that time is so, um, oh gosh, what word could I use? It, 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 it's so deceiving to us mm -hmm. because we, we look at it and it, it, a minute can feel like an hour when we're in, in pain and it can just mm -hmm. stretch, you know, and at the same time, it could be like, what just happened? I turned around and five years has gone by and now what do I do? And, and it, it's so elusive and so untouchable. And yet God stands outside mm -hmm. of time who created time, who knows the end from the beginning which is important because he has determined an end first. He, he knew the end first <laughs> and then he created and, and caused this whole thing to be so that this end takes place, which is us in his presence, mm -hmm. living in his glory. So no matter what this process is and no matter what the time is, the one who stands outside, outside of time has already ordained and said what this is. He, he's established. It's already established. It's already happened. He's outside of the scope. It's all, it's done. It's done. And, and we just, we get so uh, overwhelmed by living inside of time and thinking it hasn't happened yet. And I'm still here instead of understanding we can stand in heavenly places outside of this time shell mm -hmm. and say, it's already done. He's Amen. already completed it for me. He has already established my end. He already has the, the good plan he has in his scope has already mm -hmm. happened. Already, already done. done. Yep. It's, it's a done deal. Take it to the bank. Already happened. <laughs> you know, so yep. we can know that this is what God has done for us and enabled us to, um, if we're willing, if if we're willing to to let go of whatever controls we think we have by remaining in our hearts in this realm and allow our hearts to say, okay, Lord, if, if this, if you're more real than this is, if you have a, a good plan for me that you are orchestrating, then I'm going to let go of what I think I expect, how I expect it, what time I expect it, and I'm simply going to take your instructions because you know exactly when and how you're going to make that come about. It's done. I, I know I haven't seen it as done yet. And sometimes we can. Sometimes God can give us that vision and we can see it done. And that's the, the faith that we hang on to. But sometimes it's understanding that the joy you have is because of what is set before you. The endurance of faith is being able to do like Jesus did and endure. Sometimes we're in a season of enduring and in yeah. order to endure through whatever it is that we're having to walk through, knowing we don't see the light yet at the end of the tunnel, we feel like we're in the middle of this storm that mm -hmm. it's, if, if we can understand that by the joy that's set before me, mm -hmm. I will be able to accomplish and get through this so that I actually am living and feeling that joy. Jesus had to despise the shame and the mockery yeah. and the, and then deal with the pain and the physical crucifixion of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, he said he was able to, because he knew what the end would be, the joy that was set before him, salvation, resurrection. I'm not staying here. This isn't how the story ends. This is yes. God is getting the glory and all of this is turning around and it's going to yeah. affect the world for uh, 
until Jesus returns. So this is an unending, beautiful story that he has created. It was that joy yeah. that gave him the power to endure. Not joy. We get so mixed up when we when we read yeah. the scripture and it says, count it all joy. And we think, I'm supposed to be happy that this is happening, that we're misunderstanding the scripture. Yeah. He's not saying that you have to be happy that you're hurting or happy that that that's that's silly. He gave you emotions and a brain and you feel right. things based off of the circumstances you're going through. Right. But he's saying, I want you to take your eyes. Let mm -hmm. me guide. He, he says he guides us with his eye. Let's mm -hmm. take our eyes off of what we see for a moment and say, Lord, what do you see? Yes. What is coming? What do you what is the good plan you have for me? And that, if I know for sure I'm getting there, it's like going on a long, we had <laughs> the worst trip to go see my father-in-law over the summer. He's in Texas. We're in California. We were taking all the kids and the grandkids. It was his 90th birthday. We had been making plans for this all year round, having this huge party. People are all coming from everywhere to come to this party. <laughs> and celebrate him. And we were so excited. I mean, my grandbabies were so excited. They're going to be on a plane and they're old enough to know because they'd been on a plane before, but didn't remember. And now they're all, we're taking pictures and we know we're all going on a plane and they're so excited. Well, we get to the first destination. Trip started out okay. But the minute we get on the first flight, we realize, okay, the flight took off late. And we thought, okay, this could be a problem because we have a connector flight. And we're in Phoenix, Arizona. And when we get to Phoenix, it's in the evening now. And we happened to get there with a, a, a crew that was coming to come on the plane. They ended up timing out. They couldn't make it. Once we got a new crew, the mm -hmm. um, captain timed out. And we had to wait for a new captain. All of a sudden, we get a captain. There's an issue with the plane. Now we have to wait for the issue with the plane to be fixed. Once we fix the issue with the plane, they're having uh, paperwork issues, um, which makes no sense to me, but they had to fix the paperwork issues. Then we find out that there's another problem. They're not exactly explaining what the problem is, but we now have to get off the plane. So we get off the plane. We're sitting in the airport. We're waiting hours. After waiting there for hours, it's now, uh, it was probably about one, two o'clock in the morning. Um, we had missed, obviously, the flight's not leaving. So there we're not making it to Texas like we're intending. And I've got all my, um, family, my poor husband's on the ground. We got the grandbabies trying to sleep and there, and, and there's it, it I, newborns. I mean, it, it was quite the scene. And that happens to be the day that the whole cyber thing happened to the airports. So now you can't, take your luggage off the plane. They can't scan anything. None of their computer systems work. So you can't, you don't have access to any of your things and you can't take off. The planes can't fly. And we, so we were told, try to get to a hotel for the night. And hopefully these issues will resolve that they're working on them. You know, the blue screen of death was on every screen <laughs> all around us, you know, and we, we maneuver this precious man who tried to pile us all into the largest SUV possible to Uber over to the closest hotel. And I had said to the stewardess before we left, I said, if you're having computer issues, are the hotels having computer issues? And she didn't want to answer because there were other people listening. And she said, um, yes, we've heard that. So I was concerned we won't get into a room because they have no computer systems to check people in, take mm. forms of payment to do whatever. We get there mm. and this precious man who was working said, okay, we have some old form ways to get a credit card. You're getting basically the last couple rooms that we've got to get everybody in rooms. However, we can't issue you keys. We have no, no electronics to give you keys. So he had to literally walk with us and open the door with his way to get in. Right. And each of us had to be paired up and we were given the instruction, do not both leave at the same time. Only yeah. one of you can leave. So the other can allow you back in the room. Right. <laughs> so we were all, this is now four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. 
we don't know if in an hour we're going to get a call that we have to be back for a flight. I mean, it was, it was insanity. We ended up not being able to fly out until the, the next late afternoon, early evening. Once we got on that plane, it all started all over again. We were having issues. <laughs> it was, it was insane. We finally made it to oh Texas, which we now had to get, it's an hour drive from the airport to get to my father-in-law and is now after midnight and trying to find an Uber who's going to take us. And we need two to fit us all with all of our luggage and all of, when we got to the airport or to the hotel, it, there was no luggage. So we were just piling bodies in there, but now we have all this luggage for all of our, I mean, there was 12 of us. So it's like to get all of us, you know, to get there. We've, we had issues with the Ubers. We finally made it. We thought, thank God we made it. It's five o'clock in the morning. The party's in a couple hours. We haven't slept in two days. And we're, I literally, I kind of, we made it through. We, none of us remember barely anything. And because we lost two days, we had to turn around. We had one day and then we had to fly back. We started having issues. We thought, okay, it was over. It was, we just, we finally got here. We're not going to have these issues anymore. Then as soon as it's time to leave, we started having issues with the Uber drivers. It, we ended up not being able to Uber and we had to, we were worried we were going to miss the flight at this point, ran and got over to a car rental place and rented cars that we could just drive ourselves to the airport and mm. leave the cars there. We had issues all the way mm -hmm. home, the same way we had getting there, literally to the ride that took us back to my door. Uh, it was, I, I, it would take another mm -hmm. hour to tell you all the goofy, crazy things that happened. I'm leaving out a ton. I'm, I'm giving you literally the bare bones of how bad it was. It was, there's a, at least a dozen more things that took place, including a lost wallet. And now how do we get on a plane and how do we, I, it just craziness. So oh I say all that to say you can be in the middle of what seems like unending a barrage. It is one thing after the other. What looked what like what was supposed to be this wonderful thing, this great mm -hmm. trip, th this great adventure with God, this great, and you can feel so depleted and emptied and overwhelmed by this natural world. Yeah. And yet the day I, I, I if, if we can take our hearts and submit them to God and bring the tired, bring the exhaustion, mm -hmm. bring the confusion, bring the pain, bring, bring it to his feet and say, Lord, help me to do this, to get to an accomplished end. Even though we struggled through that whole thing, the day of the party I was able to get up, shower, clean up, come down. And everyone's comments, because they were all, we had family who had been there for days waiting for us. So they were checking on us the whole time, trying to, you know, just worrying with us, just encouraging us along the way, you know. <laughs> and they were all amazed, like, I don't know how you guys are even up. We just figured you'd sleep, like you wouldn't even come down and enjoy the party. And we did come down. And his dad had a wonderful time being blessed by so many who loved him and cared about his life. And his, he's, a, he's been a minister and, and he, he just, it, it was still beautiful. God accomplished mm -hmm. still something beautiful in the middle of Amen. the mess. And then we all Amen. got home and I looked at my precious granddaughters and they're saying, we were on the plane and we did, there was not one negative little comment. They didn't understand any of the mess. All they wow. knew was we took a trip to go see grandpa and we got to be on the plane and we got to, I mean, and so it just tickled me because I thought, boy, perspective is mm -hmm. everything. And to come with childlike faith, if we have faith like a child, we can, we can kind of soar over the traumatic <laughs> stuff that's going on around us. I don't mean to minimize the things that people truly go right. through and the difficulties that they go through, but faith, real faith. When he says, where's your mm -hmm. faith? Oh, ye yeah. of little faith, have more faith. Uh, just have more faith. Just trust me. I see it all. 
I've seen the beginning. I've seen the end. I've already got a purpose in mind. I have good plans for you, child. I, I will make sure mm-hmm. that this goes okay. I will take care of you. I won't drop you. You're in my hand. You know, we're the apple of his eye. And mm-hmm. we can take comfort in knowing he's not turning away from us. Mm-hmm. The price that he paid proves that he could never turn away from us. He has purchased us. We are his. Yes. He, he cares so much for us. And he will see to it that we make it through. Amen. Amen. That's so good. And I love that Jesus in all of his compassion and in his humanity, he never turns away from our pain. He, we don't ever need to be religious and uh, not tell him how we feel. Right. But we can always bring him this perspective and we can always get his perspective. On right. Matter. And then we can, then we can soar above it. Right. 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 Yeah. So good. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today. This has been so fun. Oh, so I, I appreciate the opportunity. It's my joy to be with you today. <laughs> oh, so good. Well, I hope and I pray this episode has blessed you. I will have links from today's episode and resources to help encourage your faith and where you can connect with our guest, Jamie Luce. Thank you. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. I sincerely hope and pray today's episode has blessed you. Now it's your turn to continue the conversation. We are all evangelists of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like this episode, rate it, share it with a friend. If it's impacted your life, let them know that you want it to do the same in theirs. Help spread the word of the good news of Jesus. Subscribe to the mailing list and get episodes, articles, downloads, and more sent right to you. Link in show notes or just text JESUS to 1-833-815-7778. Again, that's JESUS, 1-833-815-7778. We would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us at Christina Prayer Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.